Hello viewers and welcome to our series entitled When Church Hurts. I'm Pastor Colin and this series is going to help and encourage people that have been misused, abused, ill-treated, belittled, rejected or hurt in various ways within a church context. For those who have become disillusioned with some of the shenanigans going on in churches today and are absolutely fed up of it. Having said that, let's jump straight into today's episode. Hello listeners and welcome to another episode in our series entitled When Church Hurts. Today's episode, we are going to have a look at a very important topic, forgiveness. Now this tends to be a very misunderstood topic for some people and is probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks for believers. Any person who has experienced hurt by others will need to forgive them in order to heal from the pain that they have suffered. Now there are five reasons why people struggle to forgive. Number one, they do not understand what forgiveness really means. Two, they have become bitter as the enemy has used their unforgiveness to set up a spiritual stronghold in their life. Three, they believe forgiveness is just a one-time event. Four, they feel that in some way their unforgiveness is a way of punishing the other person. Or five, they are not actually aware or simply don't care that unforgiveness is sin and has consequences. Now in today's episode we're going to have a look at four reasons why we need to forgive and in the following episode we will examine the consequences of unforgiveness before finally exploring some common misunderstandings about forgiveness. So why do we need to forgive? Well number one we are commanded by scripture to forgive others. Matthew 18 verses 21 to 22 reads, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Now this verse is not suggesting that we keep a record or account of how many times we forgive someone and then retaliate when the limit is reached. It is saying that forgiveness is unlimited. Now the Jews in those times fully understood that the phrase 70 times 7 means unending or unlimited. There would be no limit upon the amount of times that we were to forgive others. Number two, unforgiveness is sin and has spiritual consequences. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 to 15. I'm going to read for you in the Amplified Version. For if you forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that it interferes with your relationship with God, then your Father will not forgive your trespasses. And also Mark 11 verses 24 to 26, also again in the Amplified Version. For this reason I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance to, with God's will, believe with confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, drop the issue, let it go. So your father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions and wrongdoings against him and others. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your transgressions. Now these few verses explain that if a person holds on to unforgiveness, then God is unable to forgive them. We are to let go of anything that we have against others, no matter how wrongfully they acted against us. Also, Luke chapter 6, verses 36 to 37. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, 
and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So forgiveness, or forgiving others, has a direct correlation with God's forgiveness towards us. Therefore, our relationship with God is greatly affected by our relationship with others and how much we choose to forgive them or not. Number three, forgiveness removes any spiritual rights that Satan has over us. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 to 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Anger is a valid feeling when others do us wrong, but a sinful response because of our anger will permit the enemy spiritual access into our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 to 11. I'm going to read the Living Bible version. When you forgive someone, I do too. And whatever I have forgiven to the extent that this affected me too has been by Christ's authority and for your good. A further reason for forgiveness is to keep from being outsmarted by Satan. For we know what he is trying to do. Unforgiveness gives Satan advantage over us and he will use it to keep us in bondage. Any doorways that we have opened through unforgiveness will be fully utilised by the enemy against us. Number four, forgiveness allows us to heal emotionally and sometimes even physically. Luke chapter 5 verses 20 to 24. When he saw their faith, he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralysed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Forgiveness has benefits to our spirit and our emotions, but it can also bring release from physical ailments. Let me share a testimony of healing through forgiveness. About six or seven years ago, a lady in our congregation arrived at church one Sunday morning in excruciating pain or excruciating back pain and was clearly struggling to walk properly. Towards the end of the service, I felt led to pray for her and the Holy Spirit prompted me to ask her if she had anyone that she needed to forgive. She opened her eyes wide in surprise and immediately answered yes. I then led her in a prayer of forgiveness and before she could even say amen, she let out a scream and fell to the ground. After a few moments, she opened her eyes, looked up at me, sat up and said in amazement, it's gone, it's gone. I helped her off of the floor and she broke out in tears of joy and started to praise God. She had been instantly healed from her back problem. The pain had totally gone. She was able to walk normally once again. And to this day, the problem nor the pain has never returned. Now, not every physical condition is connected to unforgiveness, but where it is, the Lord will reveal it and it can be then prayed into. Finally, God has given us the powerful principle and the key of forgiveness in order to overcome hurt and pain. If a person really wants to live a life free from past hurts, then they will need to obey God's commandment to forgive. The level to which they are willing to do this has great bearing on their relationship with God it will bring tremendous freedom and joy back into their life. There is life after spiritual abuse and God has given us some very precious keys to being set free from past hurts and pains. Well, that's it for this week. Tune in again for our next episode on forgiveness. Also, please check out our other videos in this series and don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes if you are blessed. So until next time, take care Stay strong and keep the faith.